Hello everybody, my name is Logan Vincent Bennett, also known as Logan Van Buren. We have a great cast with us. Today we have a lot of topics to talk about. A lot has happened in the past two weeks that we haven't been around because of Labor Day. You know, we have a lot of controversy to discuss. Today we'll be talking about college football and the happenings. We'll be talking about a few trades, one in particular, and just the recap of the week one of the NFL, which is still ongoing. Tyler's keeping tabs on the Saints game right now. The topics, man. <laughs> but you're still on... you're keeping tabs. Oh, of course. I would not. But like this is the topic. So obviously I'm with Tyler Thomas, MC Tyler T on the mic. What's up, guys? Ross Chauvin, aka Ross the Boss. Before we get started, how was your Labor Day, guys? Pretty when pretty was fun. Labor Day. Last last Monday. Oh, so the Monday we had okay, yeah, I didn't do anything. I feel that. It was just a normal day. I think I did homework. Pretty fun. I went to ULL, hung out with some high school friends, went to see my sister. That's awesome, man. That's about it, man. So, speaking of UL, we're not about to talk about UL, but we're about to talk about college. <laughs> That's a weird segue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working on it. College football, to be exact. Yeah. Joe Burrow, he's been the quarterback, like the starting for, this is his second season starting, second right? Season, yeah. He gave LSU a reason to believe in the offense for the first time in a long time. Yeah against Texas. There are a lot of statistics about Joe Burrow's performance and the way in which LSU won. You know, that was the first ever, uh, what was it, top 10 non-conference win away. Yeah. It, it was super, it was kind of cherry team pick. History. Yeah, in team history. Well, um, I, I don't know. We've never beaten a top 10 team on the road in team history. Yeah. That I don't is, know how cherry well, pick that is. Top 10 non-conference. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, Because yeah. you, you would expect that would have happened already. Yeah. There's also the fact that he's the first LSU quarterback to throw for over 400 yards since 2001. This this LSU offense is just crazy. Like you did this it is, twice. This is even better yeah. than when like if someone watched LSU and like the Zach Mettenberger days or like mm-hmm. the Matt Flynn days or like this is the best offense arguably I mean, ever. It's not LSU. like Matt Flynn or Zach Mettenberger were transcendental athletes. They were just you know very good college quarterbacks. I mean. Did you, didn't translate to the NFL very well. Yeah. I mean, Matt Flynn was okay. Matt Flynn, Matt Flynn got some, paid. Had some <laughs> moments, yeah. But the talk is now that Joe Burrow is raising his draft, draft stock like every week. Like and, before. And close to the Heisman race. I always, I always thought it was kind of higher than people gave him credit for because, you know, the Ohio, Ohio State, he played pretty good there in yeah. his couple games he played. So I always thought it was higher than people thought it was. But now I think some stock. I think right now his ceiling is looking like a high third round pick, and if he keeps on this trajectory, he could be like a high second maybe. Well, I was about to say, if your ceiling at game two is third round, you're doing yeah. pretty well. Yeah. Especially when you weren't even on draft boards. Period. Yeah. When the season started. So that's really, really nice. Usually LSU is known for the running game and the defense, and it's just really weird having utmost confidence in the quarterback. For sure. LSU is now number four in the top 25. Yes, They're knocking I was, off number nine, Texas? Yeah. Yes. We were – LSU was six during the game, right? Yeah, they yeah. definitely didn't deserve to be below so top they're, five. They're they in the college football playoff four now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we made it all the way to, what, the third last year? Yeah, Fourth? correct. Something like that. So, like, yeah, we've been there before. It's not yeah. uncharted territory. It's always territory we find ourselves out of, though. The thing I almost wrote down for the topic was what rank should LSU be, but I figured the rank would be out by the time the podcast started, so yeah. I didn't write that. But I'm happy to hear that they're in the top four because otherwise that would just be a little disgraceful. Like, we beat Texas. Yeah, we, top ten team. Yeah. And it's like the top – It really and truly, like the first week of college football, the top ten is where you want to be. Yeah. Like They'd it, really be on the edge with like Ohio State, Oklahoma for those top spots. Yeah. Well, it's like you look at the top ten spots – all of those teams will want to know. Yeah. So it's not like it's any crazy thing to be, you know, top nine. Like the ninth team may be better than the first team because they you don't play each other. There's no way yeah. to know. Yeah. So. so Ross mentioned Oklahoma. Jalen Hurts. You you think that you know you're starting to think maybe it's the system because you've gone from Baker Mayfield to Kyler Murray to now Jalen Hurts. Is it is it Lincoln Riley? Is it just a bunch of great QBU? quarterbacks in a row? <laughs> The thing yeah. about the thing about Lincoln the saying like it's Lincoln Riley or whatever is that every person here that's been in that position has shown incredible athletic talent. Yeah, like it's it would be something to say like a system thing if they weren't showing anything crazy. They were just finding you know this player here, this player there. But no, they're like running around the field showing like they can they can compete. 
I've always been a big Jalen Hurts fan. I thought he was really good at Alabama. Yeah. It's just, you know, they never set him up for success. And then the moment that he started not find his way, Tua was right there to win the national championship for him. Yeah. And you don't win a national championship for a team and not start. So, I mean, I, I watched, don't know. I watched that game Sunday when it happened. And after the game, they had interviewed Jalen Hurts. And all he said was, we got to get better. We got to get better. It wasn't good yeah, enough. Yeah, that was we the game last week. Better. Yeah. He was like, got to get better. That's crazy. I mean, it shows that he's trying to raise the standards for Oklahoma football because you know he wants to play Alabama. I mean, I, I, yeah, oh yeah, I can see that. He wants he wants Alabama I, specifically. I, yes. He either really wants Alabama or really doesn't want <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> Man, I'd say he does. Like, he, I mean, yeah, I would he got, assume. But he got like, benched in a national championship. I'd say a part of him was like, man, I could have done what Tua it, did. And really and truly, it's not like he was horrible in the national championship. He wasn't horrible. He just, they just, he just wasn't producing. Yeah, he, they just had his number. And that was yeah. a great – like, they were coached spectacularly. They were performing really well. It's just he was being – like his coach was being outcoached and he was being outplayed. Yeah, I was about to say people also forget that, that was an SEC game, not yeah. only a national championship game. Correct. So there were even more stakes on it. Yeah. So. And in brief passing, since I didn't really watch the game, um, it's just really funny. Army, if they didn't miss a field goal, Army would have beat Michigan. Well, Michigan naturally plays down to their talent, which their, is their opponents, which is what LSU normally has done yeah. in the past. But like Michigan normally plays down to their opponents, so I'm not taking anything too big out of it. I think if they're lost, I'm maybe taking something big out of it. But they just naturally play down to their opponents, so like, yeah. you know, it could be a completely different game next week. Um, they don't look too good though. Like just naturally Michigan. football, like they don't look too good. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's always some hiccups in Michigan seasons. I mean. I was going into this game. I figure Army kind of does have a shot because they are near twenty, like top twenty-five team. They yeah, finished in the top twenty-five program. last year. Yeah. They used to not be. Program. They used to not. Well, be in recent now they years. have Harbaugh. In recent years, they've been in a. No, know, I'm we're talking, talking about, about Army. Army. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. They're always a pretty solid program in the past few years. And like you said, been. Michigan always plays down to their opponent opponents. So like historically, like I think they're just not good against non-conference. Like opponents at home, I can really, say that. truly, they're not good against like most it, conference history. Opponents history has proven like that Appalachian State game. Yeah, I was about to say they can't they can't beat Ohio State for <laughs> whatever. And I'm I was thinking this is the year, but I still I don't know. I think the headlines would have been crazy if Army won. I think so, but I don't think many people would have been surprised. No, I don't think people would have been too surprised. I think it just would have been hey. Take a look at Army. Like, look what they're doing. That's a yeah. really good defense that Michigan yeah. has, too. That's that's also saying something for Army. Oh, yeah. So, speaking of headlines, there were quite a few big headlines since our last podcast. Our last podcast, all we did was talk about, you know, just some AFC South quarterback retiring. This time, we got trades. Jadavian Clowney never signed his franchise tag. So, he actually had the upper hand in the whole discussion about trading and signing for money you know the deadline came and passed where he could sign a long-term extension and it got to the point where like okay we'll trade you they wanted to trade him to the dolphins he said i don't want to play for the dolphins it's a pretty good decision yeah we'll get to that and then he gets traded to the seahawks for two linebackers and a third round pick but that's not it the the texans said they're not done bob bill o'brien says i don't want to lose my job Trades, I think it was what two first rounders and some change for Laramie Tunsil and Kenny Stills. Huge yeah. trade, huge series. Like B- Bill O'Brien, this is the make or break year for him. Like if he if they don't win the division again, he's out. If they don't get past the wild card or divisional round, I think he's he's out. It's, it's basically AFC Championship or bust for them. This yeah, year. I could see that. Well, it's not like he's got a positive record. It's like what thirty-eight and forty or something like that. No, he. I it's think like, he does I, have I think a. It, I think it's like right subpar five. Yeah, but the thing is, he's had multiple like to start. He had like I think three nine and seven seasons in a row, and then he had that awful season when Watson went down. In 2017, it went yeah. like four and twelve. In the last year, they went like what eleven and five. The season they started off like three and zero oh, because yeah. Watson was throwing like thirty touchdowns. Yeah. Um. And in the last year, I think they went like eleven and five. I can't remember the exact record. It was either eleven and five or ten and six. But they, they won the division last year. Yeah. They just lost to the team that they won the division against. Yeah. <laughs> Which is you know. And, and it wasn't a close game. And look where both of these teams are at now. You Completely know? different positions. <laughs> That's not the only big news to happen since our last podcast, though. We had a pretty big signing 
Jonathan, jo no, I'm joking. We did have a lot of extensions. I meant to write them down. I was going to go and find, like, I know Jonathan Jones got extended. Um, I know Julio Jones got extended for three years. I think they ma just made his contract, like, fully guaranteed, which he deserves that. Let's be yeah, real. Yeah. Um, but what I'm really talking about is the fact that Antonio Brown and his perpetual crybaby drama has accumulated to a point where he gets released a few hours later, signs with the Patriots. Now, I know, Ross, sometimes you're not always in the group chat, but you do catch up, and then Tyler's always in the group chat. I didn't want him. I'm a Patriots fan. I didn't want Antonio Brown at first. I mean, it's a, it's either going to really work out or yeah. just go awfully wrong. Y'all were really a good huge last roll night, of the so dice without him. And he didn't play. So let's see how that goes. It is a huge roll of the dice by I'm assuming yeah. Robert Kraft that reached out to Antonio Brown's agent. Yeah. I was going to say it's also not even like not even just based on what he does. If he comes in, like that could seriously shatter the chemistry of your receiving core. Yeah. I mean, so, we got Josh Then again, Gordon. this could be the most unguardable receiving core in the league. Yeah. Well, I mean, I agree with you. But like there's more than just talent in the NFL. Yeah, there's like, like that, the he, locker he, room. Character. Watch him come in mm -hmm. and be a locker room cancer. I mean, you just never know. Yeah, that's it what it could be. That's what I'm scared of. It could be another Terrell Owens thing. Yeah, it could be Terrell Owens. It could be, you know, any number of red receivers who have just come in and cannot buy into what many people call the Patriot way. I'm worried about Josh Gordon. Like uh, Josh Gordon finally seems like he's getting on the straight road. He was really good last night. He was so good. Him and Philip Dorsett were killing it. Some I'm nice worried. Touchdowns, by the yeah. Way. I'm really worried that this whole thing with Antonio Brown's going to make Josh Gordon go, ah, "I don't know about this." Like, but hopefully they get along wonderfully and I know some of the team, Julian Edelman and Tom Brady have really bought in. They really love it. I just hope everyone does. He's on a winning team. I mean, I was about to say Julian Edelman's the only person on that team that has his job. Like it doesn't matter who you sign, Julian Edelman's gonna be your number, your your marquee receiver. Yeah, like he's the guy. Yeah, I mean, just he was Super Bowl MVP in February. I I see what you're saying. Um, I don't know. It's really it took me a minute to process it. Like like I told you, I didn't like it at first. I was like, this can mess up so much. But y'all know uh, Pat McAfee. Do y'all watch yeah, his show? Yes. He's hilarious. Barstool works for Barstool. Barstool. Well, he did. He now he's. I think he's independent. Pat McAfee actually had a really good point is that what if Antonio Brown did all of this on purpose and as soon as, you know, Bill Belichick sat him down, it's like you called your coach a cracker and threatened to punch him and you froze your feet in a cryogenic chamber and you almost retired over a helmet. Are you sure you're going to come and play here? And Antonio Brown was like, yes, I just wanted to make it here. Like, I feel like he's been waiting just to get on the Patriots. I don't think he froze his feet to get to the Patriots. But, I mean, like, I, know, I feel yeah. like some of the antics could have been to get him like, released. Because he did want to get cut. Yeah. All the stuff that was done with HBO, Hard Knocks, with the Oakland Raiders. I mean, Antonio Brown had to stir up, probably stir up a mess to, like, create some kind of money coming into him. All the money he lost. I don't know if that was a very good. I mean, on, yeah, at a money standpoint, he lost $30 million. I mean, yeah, he technically lost. Avoided. Yeah, and not only that, he got fined. So he actually lost money being with the Raiders. That's that thirty mil was just what was guaranteed, though. Yeah, and he, still he also lost a lot of money on the other back side of that deal. Yeah, that was it was a really solid payday. So yeah. then he has to pay fines of over two hundred thousand dollars and some. So, in total, a lot happened, and we don't need to get into it. You know, there are a lot of people that talked about the entirety of the Antonio Brown drama. What I want to get into is what's happened since yesterday had Sunday. a full day of football yesterday that was amazing that made me so happy it was funny it was an interesting day of football i'm not gonna say it was at all a very you know good day solid like good day it surely was didn't disappoint day. didn't disappoint yeah like it was i don't i don't want to toot my horn but i got proven right about i'm not gonna say proven right it's week one but it I, is week one i got a little look into what i've been saying for the entire off season is that the browns might not make the playoffs and it doesn't look like they will based off a of week one which is like like 
It's week one. We can't overreact. Week one has historically not been the greatest indicator of who's going to win the Super Bowl or not. Yeah. Nope. I mean, the Vikings what started off like 5-0 and a couple years ago and yeah. didn't win a single game the rest of the year. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it happens sometimes where, you, you know. And preseason doesn't, start, doesn't factor into anything. No. But the Browns and Baker specifically and his you offensive. Do something with that offensive line. Yeah, that offensive line looked awful. But then uh, eventually, like, once the offensive line, like, just they just stopped trying and then Baker just started running and throwing the ball. At some point, Baker was just trying to make a play. Yeah. And it ended up in him throwing three interceptions. Yeah. He and just, which three interceptions he probably shouldn't have thrown, but it's not like he was just throwing the ball badly. I mean, he was just trying to make plays and got picked off. Yeah. I mean, if you're down, keep – I mean, might as well just keep digging. That, keep trying. That Titans defense looked pretty good. Might be yeah. a, Might be a fantasy pickup in fantasy mm. football, maybe. I mean, they had a lot of turnovers. Malcolm Butler, my boy. For any he team that's six. looking Odell for looks really now. good. I mean, he's just a really good receiver, though. So. Oh, yeah. That's Odell. The Chubb had some good moments. I think it's going to get better for them because they, uh, they have, what's his name, Holloway or something like that? I forgot his name. It was like the Browns, like I guess third or fourth receiver. He's suspended, and then they're going to get Kareem Hunt back midway through the year. It'll get better regardless of you know how they're performing now. I mean, there's a lot of football left. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, 15 games worth, actually, and then playoffs. Well, technically, there's for four teams in particular, there's still 16. One of them's in progress. Two teams are playing right now, Texans Saints. Anyway, Mahomes, no fluke. Oh, He's we, still good. We just, <laughs> we just got informed. Uh, I did that. I was trying to do it quietly, man. Oh, uh, uh, no, that's okay. We can yeah, talk I'll about it. it. Yeah, 7 to nothing, Texans. Live update, Deshaun Watson. Ooh, Deshaun Watson ran it in for 21-yard touchdown. Apparently, Bill O'Brien won a challenge, but I don't know what the challenge was. So. What does he want a challenge for? I just scored. Anyway. Well, it was fourth and one. Something happened. I don't know. I was reading Nick Wright's tweet. Mahomes, no fluke. He, He's good. He threw f- for a lot, and we don't need to discuss that. The bigger takeaway from the Chiefs Jaguars game, Nick Foles is out. He's out for the season, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that collarbone is just shattered. And if you would have seen the play, it didn't look like the biggest hit. Like he he threw a touchdown On when the play? yeah yeah he threw a touchdown while he was getting hit. And it was a great touchdown, and it was like, oh, he might be out for a few weeks by the look of it. He goes to a locker room. Nick Foles is out indefinitely. Then a lovely, beautiful man named Gardner Minshew the second comes in. Beautiful mustache, by the way. Did y'all peep the mustache? Yes. Yeah. This guy was fantastic in Washington State. I mean, Washington State, over the last few years, they produce a quarterback that will throw 5,000 yards in college. It's happened with Gardner Minshew. It's happened with Luke Falk. Yeah. He also started his career eight and eight, which was he was the first quarterback to do that since I think Brad Johnson. I think that was what they said, and he played a really good game. I think he only oh it was only one incompletion, right? I think it was two, including the interception. He had the interception and then the incompletion. So he was like twenty one for twenty three, had two touchdowns, had a good bit of yards. So I think the Jaguars are going to be mediocre going forward. I don't think they're going to be good, but I think. Gardner Minshew isn't the worst backup to have. He looked like he was playing really well. If they still had Blake Bortles, they'd probably make it to the NFC, AFC Championship. I'm sure they would. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hot take. So well, that's not hot take. It's just true. It's, 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 it's a truth to Tyler Thomas. A hot take to many people. To many people, yeah, yes. Yeah, many wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Thomas is an avid Blake Bortles fan. I'm he, a Blake Bortles stan. He actually <laughs> has a Blake Bortles big head in his uh, bedroom. Like fathead or bobblehead? Fathead, fathead. Oh. That's, yeah, how, I forgot the name. How did you know that? Because oh. I've, been, I've been to your apartment. Is it a Rams one or a Jaguars one? Jags, man. He's not a Ram. <laughs> He's still Jag, man. <laughs> He's a Jag at heart. Well, you mentioned the AFC Championship. I think we should discuss a potential AFC Championship contender in the Ravens. That's a really loud alarm to sound after playing the Dolphins. <laughs> I don't I don't think it is. After the season Lamar Jackson had last year and what he just did, you know, people were calling him I, I myself included were calling him a glorified running back. And now he throws a perfect passer rating, five touchdowns, and I was just in like It's very nice. It's a very good game. That was in like one half. I'm gonna be the homer that you normally are. He was playing against the Dolphins. Yeah. Let's not forget who he was playing against. They're a glorified college football team. I also they think they are probably not going to win a football game this year. I also think they're going to beat the Patriots next week. 
but that's just because that's just like a statistic like it's like historically proven yeah because i, I have ptsd win, yeah i have ptsd as a patriots fan i'm just expecting the patriots to come out next week but about with that, the l this year's super bowl is in miami it is and if new england makes it to miami for the super bowl what do you think will happen i don't think it'll matter because it will be in february and it'll be a lot cooler yeah i think it's a heat that gets the tom brady and patriots and mm. Yeah, it's. I mean, they have most of the Super Bowls have been in indoor stadiums. Yeah. It doesn't matter how hot it is. Tom Brady's going to be able to throw against the Dolphins. I think he'll be able to throw. I just, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Let's not I, just talk Le- about the I Dolphins. I was about to say, last, last thing, Lamar Jackson had like 18 seconds of time to throw the ball. True. He did have he did have time to make a sandwich. So, I'm just saying, it's a really loud alarm to be sounding right now. Or can't you just give credit to that Baltimore offensive line? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I said it was a beautiful performance. But that's the thing is that like they look great. Even if it is the Dolphins, they I mean, still look I, great. Yeah, like if you're going to handle a team like the Dolphins, like at least handle them <laughs> how you're supposed to handle 59 them. 59 to 10. I mean, Robert yeah. Griffin was sick. For six and threw a touchdown, RG three. Yeah, that's hilarious. RG three. Now I'm sounding the same alarm that I was just sounding. <laughs> now, do you really think the Miami Dolphins are the equivalent to like a Canadian football team or AAF? Team? I think that my, this Miami Dolphins may be the worst football teams ever existed. I don't think that's true. I think they may be the worst in the line. Like worse than the 2017 Browns? No, the 2017 Browns were weren't that bad. I think I think the or 2017 the Browns. Eight Lions. Yeah, the Lions were definitely the worst winless teams. I think the yeah. the Browns had talent; they just had awful coaching because of you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like a lot of their games were close. Yeah, but they played Lions very just well. Had nobody. Teams. Yeah. Yeah, the Lions were horrible, but I think the Besides Dolphins. Like I think the Dolphins Dolphins maybe statistically worse. Well, let's see. There's a lot of like you said. I'm I'm, I'm just gonna be honest. I'm kind of hoping for it. I kind of. <laughs> you want, want another zero and sixteen team? I like when teams go zero and sixteen. That's awful. You want to see that number one pick? You want to see them get Trevor Lawrence? He's be, not going this year. He would be beautiful in that. Oh movie. yeah, you're right. He that would. Main? Come on. He would. But there's more AFC East teams we have to talk about. The Bills and the Jets played. It started out as a sluggish defensive battle. Jets went up 16. I want. I want. What's the, what was the final score? Six, 17 to 16. I just want to quote my favorite sports analyst, Colin Cowherd. Oh, Sam God. Darnold, magician. 16 to zero. Just wanted, he's not actually my favorite. I just wanted to quote okay, that. Okay, you just wanted to make fun of the fact that he said that. And then the Jets lost. Magician. Yeah. Yeah, magically gave a game away. <laughs> yeah, and then he, he also proceeded to completely trash the entire Browns organization, even though we all know it's just one player he has beef with. He just hates Baker. And it's kind of crazy. It, it's very crazy. They, Baker's like the exact guy you want leading your football team. <laughs> not only that, he just, I feel like yesterday, Colin definitely was happier than most people that Baker did so bad. But I didn't, I didn't want to well, yeah, talk about Yeah, well, he about, definitely does sports analysis with an agenda. I don't want to talk about Colin Coward today because we also have another comeback to talk about. The Eagles came back. They were down like, what, 20 to nothing? I think it was 20 to 7. I can look. I can tell you. We can see, but it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> the Eagles came back on the back of Carson Wentz and Deshaun Jackson, who welcome back to Philadelphia. He had two fifty-plus touchdowns, fifty-plus touchdown it's catches. Seventeen. And That's what you love to see if you're a Philadelphia Eagles fan, just like modern day Eagles mm-hmm. with Carson Wentz, and just back in the day Eagles, like the good old days, Deshaun Jackson. I saw a great statistic that he's now second all time with 50 plus yard touchdown catches you know who who the first is right jerry rice has 36 d jacks has 30 do you think do y'all think that deshaun jackson can pass up jerry rice in the total amount of 50 what plus was the number again 36 he, to... he deshaun jackson has 30 i mean it's possible yeah he still has top end speed. How old is Sean Jackson? He's like thirty two. Like he's getting he's up got, there. Yeah, but he's still got some time though. Yeah. It's crazy though. Like usually around this age, wide receivers stop losing that top end speed. He still has it. He's still burning, taking yeah. the tops off of defenses. So that's mm-hmm. two almost three score comebacks. I made a mistake in the notes. Let's talk about an almost comeback. The Chargers and the Colts played yesterday. Looked all game like, okay, well, the Colts aren't gonna be that hot. People, most people were right. Jacoby Brissett wasn't slated for this. They weren't ready. And then late in like the fourth quarter, Coach just starts scoring. Malik Hooker gets an end zone interception with one, one, one hand. That was so pretty. I was surprised he took it out of the end zone. Yeah. But, I mean, he got, what, 25 yards off of it? He got a pretty good chunk. 
Did y'all see what Philip Rivers said afterwards? No, I didn't. He said that he was like, I can't lie and say that I didn't see him. I just didn't think he would get to the ball. So that's a solid, like, at some point as a quarterback, you kind of want to look at your receivers and trust them enough to make the play. Yeah. And trust yourself enough that you can make that throw. It's so like, as looking at that throw and you saying that, I don't mind him taking that. No. He was just trying to score. Just a really good play. Yeah. Hands down, the player of the game for that game, Austin Eckler, scored three touchdowns, including the game winner. Yeah. Marlon Mack wasn't run. a slouch either. Yeah. But you, now you got to talk about how little the Chargers are missing Melvin Gordon because they're, they're, running, they're running fine without him. Can, 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 I, can I be just, honest? I think Eckler's better. I don't. I, don't, I wouldn't his, say that. His, his average yards per touch are higher than Melvin Gordon. But he's also had lower touches per. I know, more efficient. True, but we'll see as the season winds down, and Eckler has to be that I've workhorse. Always thought, I've always thought Melvin Gordon was good, but Eckler, I've always really thought that Austin Eckler was good. Eckler had a four point eight average yesterday. That's solid. That's pretty good. I mean, that's twelve carries, fifty eight yards. One rushing touchdown. See, you gotta think. Why didn't they give him give it to him more? Especially yeah. when the game was winding down. You got his longest run was nineteen yards. That's that's pretty good. Um, the Rams and the Panthers. At first, it didn't look like it'd be too notable of a well, game. The Rams were kind of not letting the Panthers do anything. Yeah, and then the Panthers started to come back, but the Rams scored a late touchdown and kind of closed it out. The final score was thirty to twenty-seven, I believe. Yep. Andy Dalton had a career game, and no one is talking about it. Andy Very Dalton, I mean, without AJ Green, without AJ, yeah, he had Tyler Boyd, Tyler Eifert, John Ross, Giovanni John Ross, Bernard, John Ross was killing it. Yeah, he finally found that speed that he had been looking for. Yeah, and he threw for the most yards. Uh, Andy Dalton threw for the most yards he had ever thrown, and they lost by what one point was it? Yes, that's twenty-one in, to twenty. That's insane. But I think the Bengals are going to be much better than people were thinking. Threw fifty yards though. Yeah. I see. I've always thought the Bengals had a, were better off than people thought they were. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they're they're going to be a playoff team, but yeah. I think they're better off than people thought they were. I'm a hot take. I think getting rid of Marvin Lewis was a lot of the issue. Oh, of course. I mean, he he went to like what seven playoff games and never won a single one. I think that's when they should have fired him right after the last one he went to. But anyway, still have him right or no? No, no, no. no, no. no. He's. I don't even think he even. Does anyone has know a, if Joe Mixon's what his outlook is? And he got hurt yesterday. He got hurt yesterday. I didn't know that. That really sucks for me because he's on my fantasy team. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think it was a big thing. It wasn't very head, headline, but he only had six rushes for ten yards. We should hear about it within the next few days. Usually at latest, like by Wednesday, yeah, you hear yeah. about all the injuries. Another running back. Injured uh, Darius Geis for the Washington Redskins. Yeah, he wasn't doing well at all either. He carried 10 times. He had 18 yards. Had ACL surgery on the left knee and hurt the right one yesterday. Yeah, he he was not looking good at all before he went down. So you got to think maybe he's just not back to what he thought he was, you know, what well, the you know, team. The Redskins are really good at rushing people back yeah. when they're not healthy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, you're not wrong. They They need to get something together with that medical team and – their staff and just their front office is a mess. Speaking of a mess, we know we have one very particular Lions fan who was angry yesterday. Both sides, neither he Kyler Murray fan too. Oh, neither yeah. side looked pleasing. Oh yeah. So I had someone look at me and said, "Oh, Kyler Murray did really good yesterday." And I was no. like, "You didn't watch the football game." I'm like those two hundred eighty-four yards, I don't care. He started he, nine for nineteen with an interception. He was awful to start, and then he just caught fire. The Cardinals and Lions went to fourth quarter. The Cardinals just threw. I think they scored eighteen in the fourth quarter alone, while only scoring. The Lions gave it away. Yeah, really. And I mean, they didn't give it away. They shared it. <laughs> <laughs> they shared it. The mess I was talking about was Matt Patricia's horribly conservative coaching style, which I do not miss in New England. I'm sure Lions fans are getting tired of already. They just, like you said, they shared it because they ended up tying. We had our first tie. I love ties. I do too. I think they're a great thing for the game. I everyone's complaining about the ties. You just get over it. They're good for the game. So I don't mind them. Where do y'all see Kyler Murray going from here? Uh, career trajectory wise, well, just like the season, I see him as more of a Jameis Winston, just a little bit better. L- little bit. Jameis better. Winston's horrible. Um, Let's just throw that out there. We didn't talk about it. He's horrible. Yeah, I, I didn't. He's not good at football. I didn't. I didn't even put the Buccaneers 49ers game in the notes because it was such a n- not. He's just horrible at football. Let's leave it at that. He's just gonna like need more than this season to yeah. actually turn into something. For sure. 
It's not going to happen this season. But you got to think that this is the system for him. Like, if it doesn't work out with Cliff Kingsbury and the people they have, it might not work out at all with, with this whole air raid thing. So you you got to hope that Kyler can progress and that they won't have to wait until the fourth quarter every week for him to actually show that he's worthy of being an NFL quarterback. And you also got to hope for the Lions, who Matthew Stafford played a wonderful game yesterday. The offense yeah. looked great. It's just the defense fell asleep in the fourth quarter. Talking about falling asleep, the Steelers look like they never even showed up they for the wake game. Up. I don't, I don't they even get off the bus. I don't even want to talk about this game. Their too center much. didn't even know what was going on. That, that, that I was watching that play go on, and I was like, I was thinking to myself as I watched it, and I was like, that's a really good strategy. Just let the center run the ball, and then I'm thinking to, thinking to myself, wait, you can't he do can't. that. Oh, he just forgot. <laughs> he missed the. It's funny because in missing the snap count. He actually caused his other teammates to have a penalty because every the the penalty call was false start on the entire Everyone O line else. on the entire O line besides the center because he never snapped the ball. Yeah, the Patriots blew out the Steelers. Feels so bad for Juju. Does he run the laps for all of them for the penalty? <laughs> The clock's taking for Ben Roethlisberger. Oh yeah, I he thought, he looked it's... bad. Like which I'm personally excited for. But not only that, like he not if not only the, if I get to pull for a player to do bad, he may be mine. Not only did Big Ben look bad, just everyone on the Steelers defense didn't look like they wanted to cover anyone. The Steelers there offense, so many coverages, so many. It was it was rough. It was not only rough. On I was the, like, I love Tom Brady, but I almost told someone last night. I was like, you may not want to look at this game as him just being really just great right now. Like I was like, they blew so many covers. He did have some great but, deep I mean, throws. I love Tom Brady. Like I think he's great. But I was like, this may not be a very good indicator just because of how bad the Steelers defense really was. Yeah. Like sometimes you just see quarterbacks go in, they just find those tight holes, and they just they just do really well. But he was just throwing to open receivers. I mean, there were a few tight pockets he had to not, throw into sometimes. I'm not saying that he yeah. didn't do well last night. I'm just saying, like, it's crazy that that good of a game was marred by such a bad defense. Yeah. And you got to think, are the like, Steelers even a playoff team? I don't think so. It's between them and the Browns and the Ravens. You're just completely discounting the the Bengals. You have no I faith mean, in them. Just, no, I don't see the Bengals. I mean, they all. really played a What's great the game. Won that division? I mean, they I played see, a great game. I see last them going night. like an eight and eight this year. They played a team that a lot of people are picking to go in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, they played them really close and they almost won. Uh, besides the Patriots game, which I didn't want to speak about too much because it's super boring if you're not a Patriots fan. Super you know, heartbreaking if you're a Steelers fan. And pretty much every NFL fan hates the Patriots right now. I just you know, we don't need to talk about it. The Saint what's the score on the Saints and the Texans? Seven three but the Texans are driving. So it may be fourteen to three by the end of the Oh podcast. Lord. We don't need the Saints to lose a game. I mean they're probably to going to. Don't Bre- say that. Breeze an interception already. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't really a bad it was just stupidly trying to make a play. It wasn't a good decision. I understand that. Well it wasn't really a horrible throw. And at um, about 9 o'clock, the Raiders and the Broncos will kick off for the doubleheader Monday Night Football game. Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco He's and Derek Carr. <laughs> oh, boy. What a primetime matchup. Derek Carr without it. You got to think, the people who made that uh, schedule they were like. kind of laughed a little bit. They sure. laughed whenever Antonio Brown got released because they had to have made the schedule with the idea that it would be Antonio Brown on the Raiders. Yeah, well, I also think that, you know, John Gruden being on Monday Night Football the first time is probably a pretty big deal. Yeah, too. that ever, makes sense. Ever since Denver came back to Oakland, the second to last game in 2018, Denver's changed their coaches, their coordinators, their systems, and their starting quarterback. Yeah, they're whole co- facelift for the team. Basically. They're a completely different change. How do you? Uh, what do you see the outlook of the Broncos being with their new coach? I think he's going to do fine. Broncos, I, had, I think he's going to do fine. Um, I had a deep feeling they would actually I'm, like be the worst team in the NFL, but I don't think so anymore. I have no idea how that offense is going to be. I don't think the offense. They, is, who are their receivers? Mayo wow. Sanders. I think they have Cortland Sutton. No. SMU. No. I don't even know anymore. Yeah, you're right. Who are their receivers? And they have Phil Lindsay, and then they have what's uh what's the other guy? Man, we're all drawing blanks on the Broncos offense. You're not wrong. The notable thing is with Vic Fangio as their defense. You know that that's got to be a top ten defense. Oh, definitely. It should be. That's the mastermind of defenses on paper. That's gonna do it for this week's BEA Sports Podcast. Thank you so much KSLU for letting us do this and having the opportunity to record this and put this out there. My name is Logan Vincent Bennett. 
also known as Logan Van Buren. It's been a great one. I've been here with Ross the Boss. MC Tyler T on the mic. See you guys later. All right. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.